once again it's, uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you to my program today and I just want to quickly briefly look into a certain issue do you feel sometimes you wake up in the morning you just don't have the courage to want to carry on you just feel like uh, this is the end of it let's just let's put this into an end you, you, you get tired of life you just everything you do it just has no meaning anymore Probably you're, you're working, you got a job, you wake up in the morning, you just feel like today, no, I ain't going nowhere, I'm done with this job. Or you're married, you feel, oh, this marriage, let it end today, I just can't continue. Or you got a business that you're running, and you feel this business is just, it's taking so much out of you, and yet you're making money, but you're not finding fulfillment in it. You're just not finding joy in what you do anymore, and you feel like just walking out. And sometimes, yeah, probably you're even sick, Unto death, your 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 body can't take it anymore. You just tell yourself, probably this is, this this is the best time to just get out of this world. Let me just pack my load and just disappear out of this world, and go to where nobody knows me. But to to be very honest with you, we all feel that way. No one is superhuman. For some reason, the challenges we deal with in life, it just becomes so great and above us that we don't know what to do. We don't know how to handle it, and. Personally, I do get to that level. Sometimes the business, you get beat down by the business that you're into, like I'm a businessman. First and foremost, it's, you ask yourself, probably this is the time for me to quit. Let me just walk away. I've had enough of it. Then you go back, you reflect in your life, you look at the challenges, what lies ahead, and sometimes you start to lose hope. And oftentimes you reflect on things in the past and what you see is most of the negative things that have happened, the unsuccessful uh, trials you've been through and uh, that outweigh the sources you've had and some of you go as far making the very very what I would call irrational decision or what you think is a solid decision some will put a rope over their neck hang their life and just let it get away smoke it out some they just they just quit, they quit, no matter what you say, they just, some, they bury themselves in alcohol, find themselves drinking day and night, some, they just become sexual, women or men all over the place, just to satisfy that urge that is allowing them not to carry on. But let me tell you, I've got a good news for you this morning. The good news I have for you is that we have been through all that. And not just been through it, we go through it on a very regular basis especially in this world that is so unstable these days. The world we live in is so unstable, you cannot really predict, no one can predict what is going to happen in the next hour. As far as the economy is concerned, children's schools are concerned, yourself, upkeep, well-being, your house, your acquisition, cars, you name them, your job, your job. You are not sure, so we begin, to, we start fretting, fear sets in, and of course, that's exactly what the enemy wants. The enemy is the devil. He wants to take advantage of you and destroy you completely. But the good news I have for you this morning is that Jesus came to give us life so that we can have it in abundance. And let me explain to you briefly the type of life that Christ gave. Our life in Christ is not fulfilled by the things that we have. In other words, our successes from higher education to the money we have made in our business, from the, our sources we had in our place of work until our retirement. The life in Christ is not built around that. You know why? Because the scripture says that the, 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 the life of a man does not depend on the abundance of things that he has. Why? Because we can have these things and yet there's no fulfillment. For instance, you have a good job. You work that job one year down the line, you're tired of it. Pay is good, the money is good, your family is comfortable, you are comfortable, you are happy, but you're just not happy, not finding fulfillment. We've seen people who are doctors, study to be a doctor, and they practice doctors. After one of our president meets them for quite a while, what do they do? They become some become a tour guide. We've seen that. So just pick up some odd job that you can never imagine. They tell you, you know what? I found fulfillment in this more than the psychedelic type of profession that we operate and want to identify ourselves with. So in other words, these things does not really bring fulfillment onto our lives. And if they don't bring fulfillment, one thing that is obvious, frustration. And frustration will lead to 
hopelessness, and some would even lead unto death. So we gotta be careful first and foremost that uh, whatever we do in this world is first for our own good. And secondly, is to what? To glorify He that created us because He created all things anyway. So there's nothing new under the sun. And two, we are three, we must also have at the back of our mind that in this world we're just living temporarily. And four, we must understand that life itself is full of trials. There's no way we can walk through this world without trouble. If money could solve all problems that we have in this world, then the rich, they will not have problems. But if you look at the rich, they have the most problems in the world. The money just can't buy the joy peace. That's why they want more money, more money, more quests for money, acquisitions and all that. But, and, but when you're in Christ, it's a different matter. You fulfillment, if you find joy in what you do. You are working in your place of work, you enjoy it because your life is not dependent absolutely on what the job that you do or the career that you have. It depends on Christ, knowing that Christ is your ultimate of everything that you do. Come rain or shine. So you are not utterly hopeless. You live in this world. Trouble comes, trials comes, but your faith is anchored somewhere. And the reason why people feel from frustration to depression is because they have no anchor. If you have no, you are not, if you are not anchored somewhere, that will lead you onto depression, and depression will destroy you completely. So it becomes a disease or a sickness of the mind. Because scripture tells us in the book of Psalms that we should guide our heart very diligently, you know, we should guide it cautiously, closely, because out of it are the issues of life. In other words, everything we think, whatever we do, decisions, it comes from within our heart. So if we don't guide our heart, with the guidance of the Lord, oftentimes we are going to derail because we know nothing. As much as we claim to want to know, but we actually know nothing. Because the mystery of this world is revealed through our actions. The decisions that we make is a part of the mystery. You do things you don't want to do, but you find yourself doing it. And you want to stop for instance, you smoke cigarettes. You try to quit, you just can't quit. They say, okay, no, it's because of the chemical in there. Yes, it is, it doesn't matter. But whatever it is, it's an addictive. That's the nature of man. Man is addicted to all sorts of things. And the problem of life is part of man's addiction. And can we get rid of it permanently? No. Reason being that as long as we live in this world, we always have trouble. If you look at after the falls of Adam, the fall of Adam, what God said, you will continue to have trouble as long as you live. When he hand over the authority of this world to the devil, which is Satan himself, Satan controls everything. So as much as we want to be in control, it's just almost impossible. And that's where Christ comes in. And when Christ comes in, that does not mean we're not going to have problems. Or we're just going to go through life smooth, right? No, it's not true. In fact, we have more trouble when you're in Christ. When you are in Christ and trouble is not visiting your door, then you need to examine yourself. You need to check yourself if you are really in Christ. Because why? You become a target of the devil. And when you become a target of the devil, he's not going to sleep on you. He's, going to, he's not going to rest on you. He's going to make sure he troubles you so that he can disconnect you from Christ. But what do you do? When life beats you down, I suggest you do what I do. When you think all is end, has come to an end let me take it off do exactly what I do what do I do first I withdraw you know into myself I don't ask questions I've stopped asking questions you know this question we always ask well, why not why me why does it happen why not next person I guarantee you everyone that next person you point into is actually going through his or her own rough rides you know so you are just not you are not an exception we all have it but first and foremost, you need to draw back and reassess everything in your life. When life beats me down, things are not going the way it ought to go, whether it's business or family or marriage or even the ministry itself. I pull back. I began to ask questions. Not, Lord, why is this thing happening to me? No. I ask him, Lord, what is the way out of here? 
And when I asked this question, he began to first of all take me back where I have come from over the years. And what I do, I sit down, I recall the journey of my life since I grew up to be a man or since I began to have some sense of understanding of what a human being is. I, begin to, I began assessing my life, every journey. And I guarantee you that when you finish your assessment, you will realize that, that you have been through more difficult times than what you're actually going through now. And the Lord has been merciful, He's been gracious, He's taken through you all that. And when you realize that He has taken you through all that, one thing is obvious, He is going to, still going to be there. Because why? He never changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So you must have that faith and that belief that He cannot change, but He can change your situations. Probably what you're actually going through it's just a test of times to take you through another greater level. Because what I've realized about working with the Lord is that when He takes you through the trial and you're able to overcome that trial, it opens doors for a promotion. And that promotion takes you to a much higher level. And when you get to a much higher level, you're going to be tested again. And that's the right uh, Paul saying that we should count our trials and tribulations as a source of joy. Because when you overcome it, you become a better person. You're able to equip others. You're able to teach others from your experience what you've been through. Hence, the scripture says in the book of Revelation that we overcome the word by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. You know that with the blood of Christ, which died on the cross, and the testimony we give. And our testimony comes through the trials and tribulations that we go through. So today, I don't know what you're going through. You're maybe going through a hard life or whatever you think it is. Give it a name. It's okay. But you must understand that God has, Christ has not forsaken you. He's always there with you. In fact, He wants to take you to the next level. But you need to hang in there. Because if you quit now, you're calling for trouble. In other words, you're heading towards final destruction. And that's what your, the enemy wants. Satan wants to steal your peace, your joy, and destroy you finally, eternally. But don't give him room. When you're going through that process of feeling like giving up, what you should do? Reassess your life. Count your blessings where you have come from. Look at where you are now. Then compare yourself to your peers. And see who you are. You, you realize you're actually far much ahead of most of your peers. And that the law you give thanks. I want you to give thanks. Encourage yourself. This is just one of those times that I've been through before. And this will come to pass. You know why? Because there is nothing new under the face of the earth, number one. Number two, there is nothing that has a beginning without an end. So whatever you're going through right now, it will definitely come to an end. That I can guarantee you that. The three, you need to know how to pray. Because prayer is very important. Even Jesus asks us to pray on a regular basis. So you learn to talk to God over your situations. Before you start running to men, to women, for counseling, psychologists, others, First of all, go on your knee and talk to God. He is there. He's listening to you. And you ask yourself, well, why am I praying to God when He hears all things, He knows all things? I ask you a question. If you have children, when they need something, don't they come to you? You cook them breakfast, lunch, dinner. Already they know they're going to eat something. You already know within yourself you prepare the dinner and all that. But oftentimes we still ask them, what would you like to have for dinner? Or they come to you tell your mom, dad, I'm hungry. So, it form is a part of the relationship we have with God. Whereby we can go to Him, we can submit our prayer, our supplications, our request unto Him and say, Lord, I need this, I need this. Let your will be done in this. And oftentimes He grants the desires of our hearts. Because you know you are not asking in the wrong manner. Of course, even when you ask in the wrong manner, He's still going to deal with it in His own way. Because He knows what is beneficial to you and it knows what is going to destroy your life. So if, if you ask wrongly, perhaps it will not give it to you. Just like the way your son or your daughter will come to you and say, I want this. You say, no, 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 I'm not giving you this because it's going to cost you this havoc in your life. So you don't give it. Same thing in our relationship with God. So it's not everything you ask you're going to get, but oftentimes it, it does give. So from my experience, I suggest re-examine your life, assess where you come from, give thanks, and now take your need, what you're going through now, and present it to him and say, Lord, I know you know that you are watching. As you watch, this thing is beyond me. I can't handle it. 
but let me leave it at your feet and let you deal with it. And but remember, when you leave it there, you mustn't go back to it complaining, whining, asking him, when is it going to be? It should be tomorrow. Why are you? No, 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 no. Wait upon the Lord. The Bible said that wait upon the Lord, they shall what? Renew their strength. So let you wait upon him until he grants you that you desire. It might take a day, a month, a week, a year, doesn't matter. But the fact is that he will grant it when it's the right time. So it's good to keep the faith. It's good not to measure on what you have not been able to achieve. Why? Because Satan will want to use that to decide your future. What you have not achieved, he will count that as failure and build on that on your mind. And you will go with that. But rather, look at what you have achieved over the years and build on that on a positive note. And let the Holy Spirit guide you in all this, you know. Sometimes even the things we've always desired to achieve, we couldn't achieve. Probably it's to our own benefit. That's what I realized. Because the Lord knows if you achieve that, it's going to end up destroying you. We have seen people who have so much strong quest to make so much money. And this money became so destructive to their life. Their marriage, their children, everything. You can go out there, do your Google search and check out on rich people. They're not having it all wonderful as we always think. But you that have your strength from the Lord, you know that your hope derives from Him. You need to do something. Call upon His name while He may be found. And I bet you, when you seek Him, you will find Him. There's a difference between looking for Him or seeking for Him. When you seek, you search very deeply. And when you do that, that's seeking. The scripture say you will find Him. But you cannot be in a relationship with him whereby day in, day out, you don't know how to talk to your father. You cannot pray. You cannot wait upon him in prayer and fasting. The things, basic things the scriptures encourage us to do, you don't fellowship with him. You just felt every Sunday you go to church, that's good enough. You hear the preacher, you hear the good music playing on YouTube or you're playing on your, on your radio. You wonderfully hear your Christian music. You're happy with that. Christianity is beyond that. One thing we must acquaint ourselves to it is a faith coming by hearing and hearing through the word of God you can hear but if you don't fellowship with whom that story or the scripture all these things we're talking about is all about which is Christ himself you will not experience it but when you hear of him through music through preaching through whatever mediums you, you hear about, your, about all these things and you have you form this formidable relationship with him where you have a conversation with him on a regular basis it becomes much more meaningful. You are not just a church goer. So it's important that when you are at that level where you feel like giving up, you feel like walking away, in fact, that's the best time to actually sit back, really look into things, and hand it over to He that knows all things, that created all things. Because He alone is the one that is capable of minimizing or totally eradicating whatever you're going through. Remember, it's not by power, it's not by mind, so it's by the Spirit of the Lord. And when you allow the Spirit of the Lord to take control of what you do, what you say, I guarantee you, not just the future, but also eternity, which we're going to discuss some other times. So I hope you have a lovely day. I'm going to pray for that Lord, whatever you're going through, that the Lord will give you grace and strength to go through it at the moment. If it's a disease in your body, I pray that you'll be healed in the name of Jesus. If you're looking for a job, I pray that the Lord will open the door for you, that you'll find a job out there that is suitable for you in Jesus' name. If your marriage is in disarray, I trust and believe that God will bring you together to the glory of His name. And whatever you're going through, that the Lord will reach out from heaven and touch you in that area and open doors for you that no man can shut and make your joy be full which is in Christ Jesus remember to tune in again I will come back to you or some other times next time I hope you have a good time please share with people what you enjoy in this program and give us a feedback so that we can also relate back to you thanks for watching I'll see you once again bye bye